Today in the news, we see a lot of things about spies and hacking, can't seem to get away from it. The way they use hacking today is not just about the computers. It's not just about stealing the information. It's specifically about using that information against you. And this is your brain, obviously sober. The two parts I want to discuss today are your prefrontal cortex, which is right here. And this is your conference room. This teaches you strategy. This is how you plan. This is the conscious area of your brain. A lot of the daily work that you do, it's fully conscious and it's thinking about something in the prefrontal cortex. In the middle is the limbic system, specifically the amygdala. Now the amygdala is designed for one specific response, this kind. When you have a, 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 an amygdala response, you will only be able to not think. You will get into fight, flight, or freeze. Hopefully you won't freeze when this animal comes around. The fear system will react. It's an instinctive system. It's a primitive system. It's the lizard brain. We've had this since the beginning of time, and all animals have this as well. But what other things make us react and actually do things that we might not realize we're doing? Bias. Negative bias specifically. Interesting one is when we read the headlines. Notice how there are a lot of them are negative. Why? Because it actually generates your attention. Well, another example of uh, negative bias is if I told you you had beautiful eyes, but your attitude sucked, what are you going to remember? And another one is trust and safety, which goes partly with the amygdala, but also in our prefrontal cortex and our emotions. We want to feel safe. One of our biggest things in politics is to feel safe, and some of the reasons we vote is to have that feeling. The last one actually is important, is the actual conditioning of approval and needing approval. You guys have all heard of Pavlov. And Pavlov is specifically, he came out with a study where one rings the bell and the dog comes around and gets the food. But when he rings the bell, the dog salivates. This dog could not do anything about this. Once you ring that bell, the dog will salivate because it associates itself with food every single time. And this is called the Pavlovian method. Now, the question is, can we do this to a human? Do you think simple tricks like this work with us? And how many people actually read this the way that we thought you would read it? So interesting thing, this is an actual perception trick around, based around our society and how we read information. But what's actually more important is about reflex and reward. So the reason why the dog actually salivates is the fact that it's getting a reward at the end of it. So it's excited and makes an association to this. Do you guys remember this? The reward chart as a child, right? Hannah over here did her homework, so she's putting a star on the chart, right? And this is all about approval, both parent and teacher. This comes into play in our childhood when we are powerless to do anything about it and as we're learning. But the question is, does this play today as an adult? And how does it affect us? Maybe giving the, the Uber driver a five-star rating. You know why? Because he is now modified to behave himself, drive well, and give you good service. This is actual behavior modification. And this also lets you know, hey, I can trust this driver. Because it then becomes a feedback loop and a trust mechanism. But this is actually modifying a mainstream of people. This is why we actually very rarely get crimes going on with Uber or Lyft. Another one, how you might choose your favorite hair salon. These stars are actually used on purpose. They are based on our childhood, and they produce dopamine and, 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 and indicate a reward. So this is not an accidental piece. One more, with authority. Anybody been to a Michelin restaurant? As we know, it has an authority next to it as well. It's not only my parent or teacher, but it's someone that's well known for judging and critiquing restaurants. So when you want status, you get your three-star Michelin. So there's one more conditioning out there, another kind of bell that is metaphorically causing you to salivate. Sure, you've heard of this. The like button. Seems like a fun toy. We all got used to it. We adapted very quickly to it in the last 10 years. It's no different than a link and the like. Now it's become a like, and we have different reactions to it as well. The interesting fact about this is this is not actually a toy anymore. We have seen foreign entities and foreign military influence that actually utilizes this as a weapon to actually hack into our democracy. It isn't about them hacking into a computer and specifically doing something and changing our vote. It's actually about how they can influence and gain information and reconnaissance on you. Let's do something really, really benign. In the world of spies, they have a concept called reflexive control theory. This is a framework that's all about changing or disrupting your decision process. So they study this. They call it psychological operations, or PSYOPs for short. And this idea is literally to make you 
have a reflex. Headlines do this naturally. And in some ways, they do it on purpose. You might not even read the entire story once you get to the point where you're like, oh, that was boring. You know, headline was bigger than it was. But in the same sense, this technique is used by foreign operatives to also get you to do things or find out things about you. Example, everybody loves a good Hasselhoff meme, at least people who are as old as I am. So the interesting thing about this seems pretty benign, right? Atari, Pontiac Trans Am in the 80s. What's that going to do if I were a spy using that meme on you? It would give me your age group, between 40 and 55, pretty much. And those are the people that likely respond to it and make a, a like to it. Some of the younger kids here probably don't get that joke, and it's on purpose. Another one. This one? Notice there's a very, very specific thing here in this one. This one actually was used by the Russians in the election. So this is, like if you believe, keep scrolling if you don't. Using authority and command, it tells you what to do. It is on purpose. Why? Because when they do get the 87,750 likes, they now have an army of certain people of certain faith. And that is actually interesting. So, next one. We all know there's some hot topics in the last few years. This one over here. All the tones are nude, get over it. This had 254,000 likes, also a Russian deployed meme. What does this affect? Race. A hot topic, something that actually has to do with your identity, very important. I actually decided to do my own experiment. <laughs> the Instagram stories, but the story I actually decided to do was write a story on a story. Once upon a time, on a social network in Silicon Valley, someone added to their story about how stories are designed to replace the social media post feature in an attempt to keep you on the platform chasing likes within a 24-hour period. And it worked. The end of my story inside of a story. So if you look at it, though, and we look at the numbers, what was interesting is what actual emotion or what uh, indicator am I pulling from this? Anticipation, also known as curiosity. And so the idea is that 82% of people were actually curious and stayed with the story. By the way, if you're going to use stories, I would recommend writing stories on them because it makes more sense. So let's look at this in the real world. In 2013, I want to show you what I call a cyber attack. And what I call a cyber attack means it uses both psychology and hacking. In 2013, there was an Associated Press hack by a, a Syrian group. It was a non-state government, but they supported the Syrian government. And they broke into the Associated Press. They were known for actually hacking into a lot of well-known journalist sites. And they posted a tweet, breaking two explosions in the White House and Barack Obama is injured. Now, we all know that's fake news, never happened. But in the three minutes of the actual uh, tweet, this happened. Negative $136 billion erased in equity off the Dow in three minutes. Now, if someone's a little bit like financial and thinking about what the cause could be, one could actually make a little bit of a profit off of that. So when you're actually thinking about this, you've had an entire set of people completely respond to that news in three minutes, and it took them a little bit to figure out that it's not true. And that's an interesting problem that we face today, is how do we actually deal with, oh my gosh, not reacting? So that's a tough one. So what do we do now? The answers aren't spycraft for us in defense. The answers aren't special hacking skills. The answers are actually something a little bit more simple. More about mindfulness, more about cognitive behavioral therapy, and more about knowing who we are, right? As well as who they are. So one of the first steps in this would be to check the source, right? Now, again, we also just demonstrated the Associated Press was a well-known source. It got hacked, right? But maybe you give yourself time. I, I do something at work. When I get a little upset, I give myself a week to make a decision on it. And I do that on purpose because it allows me to calm down and actually make sure that my agenda is pure. It isn't about me being upset. Now, emotions, what you might want to learn is emotions in your system last 90 seconds. That's it. If you sit quietly and ask yourself how you're feeling in one set, you'll realize that you're feeling differently 90 seconds later. And so we don't necessarily want to depend on everything about our feelings. So we want to check the source, but we also want to do a little bit more than that. We want to make sure that maybe there's the news somewhere else as well. Is it been covered? And give yourself a little bit of time to make sure the news is true. Secondly, your emotions, very powerful, they can be driven. Ask yourself when you're reading a headline or you're reading something new and some kind of content, how am I feeling? And why am I so triggered? Right? A really interesting fact is if it's political and religious based, that actually comes from your childhood too. And it's a trigger point because it's what they call an axiom belief. It's something that you probably can't change someone's mind about. And so one of the interesting things is you can ask yourself, is my emotions right now positive? That could be hope. Now also what you need to know is even if it feels like a positive emotion, hope is one of the most powerful drugs in the world. We've seen entire elections 
based on it. But we've also seen entire elections based on fear, the other big one. So we can ask ourselves, how do I feel and why? And that's actually an important thing. And the next step is, what am I reading, and what do they want from me? The motive. Now, spies go by four sets of main motives, money, ideology, coercion, and ego. But there's a lot more to this. It's all about making you make a decision or have a decision around something. So you want to ask yourself, what do they want? Why am I actually reading this? Now, we all know, for instance, media has a real life, and they have to make money, and they have to get ad traffic and things like that. So some of it changes the balance of why an article might be written. So that's where you want to check sources and do fact checking. But you basically ask, what kind of response do they want from me? And then the last one is actually to ask why. Now, in, the, in Japan, they actually have a system that I think has been adapted over here as well called the seven whys. And the idea is that if you ask yourself why seven times, you will actually get to the root of your problem. So this is where you kind of have to start knowing yourself. So if I'm reading an article or I'm reading a headline or a meme and I'm wanting to click or respond to it, I ask myself, one, how am I feeling and why am I triggered? That's the one. And then whatever that answer is X, then I ask about why is X. And then I continue doing this and doing this and doing this. This allows yourself to pause and actually not react to all this information that they're trying to specifically put out on you to just get you to click. So your best defense, individually and collectively, is to think about non-reactivity. Ask yourself and say, how can I actually be non-reactive in this? Do I need to actually click on this? How is this affecting me? And essentially, you'll actually be able to defend not only the computers that get hacked, but your own mind. Thank you.